Hello and welcome to Super Northwest. Today we're off to the Isle of Man. Now I've come to Liverpool uh, to pick one of the lads up. So we've packed the bikes up as you can see. Um, we're all ready to go. We're going to go down the pier head, pick up this steam packet ferry. Uh, we should be there at about 2 o'clock. Let's go. So I'm just going to guide you quickly through some of the places we're going to visit today. Starting off at the pier head in Liverpool, we head over the Irish Sea to Douglas in the Isle of Man. We then take the TT race route up the mountain to have a look at the Joey Dunlop Memorial. Then onto the famous Craigney Bar pub, where we get a nice surprise from the owners. And then after this, we're going to take a look at an old abandoned explosive factory hidden in the woods at Port Corner. Finally, we take a look at some nosy seals down at a deserted beach at Ayr's National Nature Reserve. Let's go and take a look. This is the boat we will be travelling on today. A catamaran called Mananan. Now it's a wave piercing high speed car ferry built by an Australian company called Incat in 1998. Whilst in use in Australia, it had been given other names Devil Cat and Top Cat. Now in 2001, it was contracted by the United States military for a five year joint army and navy mission. With its speed of up to 40 knots, able to carry 400 tonnes of cargo and up to 325 combat troops, is it any wonder why the military would want a boat like this? It's powered by four Caterpillar 3618 marine diesel engines that power four water jets which are used for steering in reverse with the aid of hydraulics. The boat was bought by the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company in 2008 for what is believed to have been a sum of £20 million and it received a £3 million refit soon after. Now the Steam Packet Company is the oldest passenger shipping company in the world at around 190 years old, dating back to 1830. It travels from Douglas Sea Terminal to five ports in the UK and Ireland. And the history on this company is massive, so please check out all the info on the internet if you can. Like the captain's open these big bad boys up now. Get the bit of speed up.
Ladies and gentlemen, we will shortly be arriving on our berth. Please remain in the passenger lounges until you are called to disembark. Right, so we finally made it. Uh, we're just staying over there in the Devonian Hotel. Uh, so we've dumped all the gear. So we're just now going to go and do like a lap of the TT. Uh, Scott's done a map. So let's go. So we've just come up the mountain roads here. Uh, we've stopped at a place called the Victory Cafe. Uh, we're going to have a little look at the Joey, Joey Dunlop monument in a minute. But we've just met, met a lovely bloke from, uh, from County Durham called Michael. And he's on this uh, Honda monkey bike. And he's come all the way from Durham on it. Fair play to him. So what is it, Michael? A 125cc? Yeah. Wow. So you're getting 200 miles to the gallon out of it. Yeah. It's got a sweet little exhaust on it as well. So I bet you that's such a laugh down these roads then, mate. Wow. Going all the way back home today, are you? Last day? Tonight? Oh, yeah. bro, and you've had, you've had a good trip, like. Brilliant, brilliant super. trip. The weather's been fantastic, cracks been good, got a good look out. Oh, well, fair play to you coming on that, mate. Thank you very Excellent. much. Excellent, yeah, and have, have a great trip back. Cheers. Superb. Yeah. Right, so we're gonna have a go at this now. Michael's decided he's gonna trust me with it. Oh, yes. <laughs> So that was fun, lovely bloke there, Michael, all the way from County Durham, giving me a go his bike. Um, up this mountain road, we've got uh, the Joey Dunlop uh, Memorial, so we're just going to go and take a look at it now. So a little bit of background to Joey Dunlop. Joey had 26 TT wins and finished on the rostrum 40 times at this race. He was also very successful in many other road and track races like Northwest 200 and Ulster Grand Prix. Off the track, he was very down to earth with his humanitarian work. He once drove a wagon with supplies to an orphanage in Romania. Now Joey died doing what he loved in Tallinn in Estonia in 2000. Leading the 125 race, he lost control and crashed into a tree. Before the accident, he had already won the 750 and 600cc events. What an absolute legend. So Joey won this TT 26 times, what an absolute monster. Now this was uh, 
put up in 2002. Right, so we're going to head off now, up, back up the mountain road, uh, and see if we can get the drone up and get some uh, some aerial shots for you. So we've just pulled up at the famous Craigney Bar pub, uh, which is on this famous bend. Now I'm going to show you. Uh, before we, we go and have a look at that, just let let's have a little look at this uh, this petrol pump. This must have been here for years. This. The VIP balcony. Seriously? Yeah. So the landlady just said she's going to open the VIP balcony for us. What that is, I don't know. Let's go and take a look. Parties and different things. Also for TT, yeah. we have um, VIP hospitality. Yeah. Um, it's a Hey Roman, Hello. we've got some visitors that come yeah, down yeah. a little longer. <laughs> Hello mate. So, so obviously you can have a look, I'll just open the balcony for you. Oh great. Uh, have a wander, so obviously we've got all the famous, of all the fame as well, so. So this is what the VIP uh, balcony is all about, and the landlady's kindly opened it for us. Uh, we've got a better view of the bends coming round here to show you. Can you imagine watching the TT from here? Oh. Lorenzo didn't know he'd been here. Yeah, yeah. Rossi's been here as well, mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Nicky Hayden as well. Well dressed his show. Right, guys, this is Sandrina, <laughs> and she's gladly let us on the balcony. What a privilege. Cost a fortune out there on the race day, doesn't it? Yes. And she's let us on to have a good look. So, uh, thanks a lot. You're welcome. It's been Very really lovely. lovely. Thank you. So th this is just uh, some of the famous riders which have been up in this bar. Let's take a look. So we've got Steve Parrish there. There's Guy Martin. Ah, uh, Carl Fogarty there. There's John McGuinness. There's, there's our Kevin Schwantz there. In the white jumper. Met him. There's Milky Quail. He's a legend. Favourite one is Nicky Hayden with Guy Martin. Nicky Hayden was an absolute legend. To be up here, mate. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, this this would be absolutely amazing watching the races from here on race day. A couple of beers, loads of food, out on the balcony. The VIP balcony which we've just been on. Great. Pictures of all the old riders here, Scott. Yeah, seen all the old, very old signs you've seen of plants that should be all be restored. Yeah, well, Sandrina was saying she found them uh, buried away in the back. Yeah, the original ones instead of the, the plastic signs. Yeah, the got now, original. Where the turns are coming up. Yeah. All these old dudes on the wall here. Balls of steel, some of them guys. So that was the Crackney Bar Pub. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, we did. Let's move on to the next place. Right, we're on a, a bit of a wild goose chase here. Uh, we've just stopped at a place called Manx National Glen, which is just outside Laxey. And we're trying to find uh, an old uh, explosives factory that used to produce bellite. Apparently it's abandoned, it never got quite finished. Uh, but it's off this road somewhere, according to the lady in the cafe. Um, we've got to go down the road, take a, take a bit of a right, right down to the beach and across a bit of a glen. So we're gonna, just going to try and find that now and have a little bit of an explore. Maybe get the drone up and have some uh, aerial footage going on. Let's go and have a look. Right, so we've turned off and come down to a bit of a beach and parked the bikes up. Um, we've just got to walk about 500 metres down this uh, this path now uh, to try and find this place. Hope it's worth it. Don't really know much information about this place, but I'll try and find something out more history on it. Uh, let's go and take a look inside. So the background to this place starts around 1890 when a group of Swedish businessmen decided to build the factory to make bellite. Now bellite was a Swedish invention designed for use as an explosive in mining. The plan was to capitalise on the recent mining boom and to produce the explosive on the island to cut down costs of shipping it in. However, the business operating licence was withdrawn amongst safety concerns and the place just wasn't finished. It's remained pretty much how it was left all them years ago.
So we've just come across this deserted beach um, and we've just spotted a load of seals fishing in the sea. Let's go and take a look at them. The island has a breeding colony which consists of Atlantic grey seals and common seals. I think the ones we've got here are grey seals as these are known to be the most curious and can often be seen bobbing up and down in the waves checking people out. Now the common seal is the smallest of the two and also known as a harbour seal. But despite being called common, they're actually less common than grey seals. Next time I come here, I'll bring some fish. Well, they've obviously spotted us and they've just moved up ahead there, so um, I'll just have to keep still for a bit to see if they come up. Thank you so much for watching this video and please join me next time when we take a visit to Murray's Motorcycle Museum where Scott gets some fairies. Oh well, look that's got fuck all to do with me <coughs> And I get ribbed. See you there. No, it, so what you're saying, I'm a girl because I ride a Honda. Well, yeah, well, you've, you've heard it first hand yes, from the owner already. <laughs> oh, I, no, oh, fair I mean, play. <laughs> part and part.